Hey everyone, I'm Joel Duff. Yep, I'm back and welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into my speculation about what might be coming to a creationist organization near you in the future. As many of you know, organizations like Answers in Genesis have been at the forefront of promoting a young earth perspective of the history of the world. They provide a wealth of resources from articles and books to videos, educational programs, all designed to support and disseminate their views. They become social media experts and have influence far beyond the questions that hap like what happened to the dinosaurs or how did Noah fit all those animals on the ark? But we might ask ourselves, what happens when these perspectives come up against what are becoming ubiquitous modern generative AI tools? Well, many young earth creationists argue that these tools like ChatGPT 4.0, Claude 3, Perplexity, Gemini, and others they might argue that these are all biased against their views on key issues, like the age of the earth, and what are, I guess you could tell, call frequently related skepticism of, say, climate change or even vaccination. They claim that when their audiences seek answers from these tools that are freely available on the internet, they often encounter information that doesn't align with a young earth framework and might even provide disclaimers about creationism as representing simply a fringe or maybe a disregarded viewpoint. So what's the solution? Well, what's the solution in the creationist mind? My bold prediction for today is that these organizations like Answers in Genesis and Answers in Genesis in particular, they're gonna take a step forward by creating their own AI search functions and chatbots. These custom AI tools would be trained exclusively on their extensive repository of young earth creationist materials. But to what end, you might ask? Well, of course, to ensure that their users receive the answers that are prioritized to a young earth viewpoint. And of course, critically examine secular perspectives as well. In other words, to get the answers from Genesis. So what I want to do in this video is I just want to explore this idea a little bit farther about how AI tools might be developed, the challenges that young earth creationists might face, and what it could mean for the future of the young earth creationist movement. I also want to discuss the broader implications of creating AI that is specifically designed to uphold particular ideological viewpoints. So if you're interested in the intersection of faith, science, and in this case, technology, Stick around, because that's what we're going to dive into next. Okay, if you're a regular follower of my YouTube channel, you'll probably recognize that I've been gone for a little while. It's been well over three weeks since I last published a video, so that's the longest time I've gone in a two and a half year period uh, without posting a video. Uh, it's partly intentional. I mean, partly I was very busy with some other things and I actually have a number of uh, important things coming up which are going to distract me from this uh, this uh, YouTube channel as well. But it's also intentional. I've been doing a whole lot of reading, been doing a whole bunch of research and a whole bunch of reflection, right? The three big R's. Uh, one thing that I've done is I've spent about four Oh, at least 40 hours reading articles and listening to videos on the current state of artificial intelligence and kind of exploring some of the capabilities of AI. Um, I'm interested in that from the from what I'm going to talk about today, which is how that might play into the future of young earth creationism. But I'm also interested in it from a professional standpoint on my on my job as an educator. What does this mean for the future of education? And and those are things that I, I very well might explore uh, later on uh, on this channel. Uh, but for now, let's dive into this topic of answers in Genesis and its potential use. How might it gain some leverage in this new world of media that includes uh, artificial intelligence operators, all right, or uh, learn uh, large language models and all these other things? So first, I would just want to say that Answers in Genesis says, I mean, they've been for a number of years already uh, attempting to become the sort of one-stop shopping place for all things Christian worldview, right? Well, at least the fundamentalist sort of worldview type Christians. What they're doing is they're creating a certain perspective around um, the flock that follows them. Uh, helping them to maintain or, or not be able to encounter this 
increasingly secular world, right? The culture sort of war stuff that they've been waging, right? So they have their own subscription video platform. They've got a, a variety of new shows. They have a massive trove of videos and books and articles. They got homeschool curricula. They have church curricula. They have or Sunday school curricula, and they also have Bible school uh, materials. They also have a brand new multi-million dollar headquarters uh, south of Cincinnati, and that's where they're going to be setting up what I think of as their multimedia empire. Right? They want to become the biggest movers and shakers or the largest Christian influencers in our society. So what would be the next step? Right? What would be the next thing that they would need to do in order to shape information? Right? Control information. Well, most of you are probably aware of large language models like ChatGPT. Uh, and the types of things that are being done with it and how it is uh, it is exploding on the scene. It seems like there's news every day about new AI things or new things that AI can do and how it's going to reshape really everything in, over the next five to 10 years. So I'm sure that organizations like Answers in Genesis are thinking about this. How can they use this particular technology as much as they might disdain the technology and and they do have problems with the technology because they have written about how biased you know it is but i'm going to suggest that they might try to turn that on its head right they might try to turn ai on its head and teach ai their own ai basically algorithm right how to behave as a young earth creationist and then feed their audience to that particular particular search vehicle, right? So you have things like uh, perplexity, and and perplexity is uh, I, I believe that's grown out of some people that left OpenAI, which is the company behind ChatGPT, uh, and they left it for you know a number. Well, I mean these companies split and people move around all the time, but a number of people have left unhappy with supposedly security issues with OpenAI openness of it uh, and uh, and have started this company which they think of as being a little more security conscious which is called perplexity and it's really a uh, potential Google replacement right it's a search vehicle uh, and it, but if you search for information about uh, ask questions of perplexity about young earth creationism you're going to get answers that are going to uh, scour the internet present sort of the consensus view on a particular subject and that consensus view that it's going to then uh, present to you because what it's going to do is it's going to write a paragraph or however much you ask it to give it uh, uh, on a particular topic to answer your question your particular prompt uh, and it's likely to respond right with a old age perspective and if you force it to talk about young earth creationism, it's going to say something about, well, yes, there's this young earth creationist view, and it will tell you what, what its particular assumptions are and its proposals, um, but that's not the conventional or, or typical viewpoint and is not considered to be, uh, maybe even go as far as saying not considered to be valid. Right, so the concern would be uh, from young earth creationist perspective, just like there's concerns from lots of dis different constituencies in our in our in our world today. Right, lots of companies are concerned about uh, not being able to have their particular message heard. When simply, if if we get to the point where we go to something like perplexity, and I admit that I go to ChatGPT and perplexity, and I also, I also like Claude uh, three as well, um, in order to answer questions that I might have, right? Explain this to me, or what is this particular object? Or, you know, tell me the history of X, Y, or Z. And it then writes a history of that, which is sort of the collective wisdom of the web or the collective wisdom that has been trained upon in order to spit out a response to me, but it's not a particular perspective of any individual, right? And so it becomes, in some cases, the consistency, I don't want to go down the whole trail of like, when it's giving wrong answers and, and and so forth and why that might be but i think in general on topics that are for which there's a lot of information out there and much has been written it's going to provide a sort of a a, a general consensus typical uh perspective uh on on a particular topic 
And since Answers in Genesis and Young Earth Creationists don't have that typical perspective often, they're going to feel like their perspective is not being presented. Whereas if you go to Google, right, they have written a lot of articles and actually there's a lot of questions you could ask, like what happened to the dinosaurs or, um, uh, you know, what is the history of the Grand Canyon or something like that. And you're going to find in the top 10 search results a link to Answers in Genesis, right? That link is going to go to Answers in Genesis and you're going to find out young earth creationist response to that. Right, so you have to have some kind of discernment somehow in order to look at the links that you're being provided on Google and go like, yeah, I'm gonna, that one looks interesting. I could learn something about that topic from there and then go to that site in order to learn the, the result. Now, of course, what Google is doing now is Google has its own uh, Gemini or well, they've had multiple names for it, but they have, uh, I think it's Gemini 1.5 that is now responding to many questions and you'll see that sort of like AI response at the top of your Google search now, in which it gives you a little summary I might give you a link to like uh, a representation of like where this most of this information comes from. But nonetheless, it's going to give you kind of like the answer to your question without you having to click on something and go to another 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 page. All right. This is why many, many information suppliers, right? Newspapers and so forth um, and blogs and and uh, and all that, like my own blog, uh, it extracts things that I have said, which I, in some ways it's kind of cool. You know, I search for questions that I've talked about on my, on my particular blog, uh, science and faith uh, questions. And Google writes this little AI summary and I look at it and it's like, yeah, that's actually something that I've said, you know, that, that, that represents uh, my thinking. Right. And sometimes the link will actually be to one of my blog posts um, on that particular topic. And so like that elevates my particular perspective, but of course, you know, that's my perspective. It, it means other perspectives aren't being seen uh, as easily. So what answers in Genesis, of course, would dream to do is be providing those answers. You know, if you're not going to go to the website, if you're not going to be directed to a particular place where you can then find that information, at least you want your your particular viewpoint to rise to the top so that it's the thing that is seen by the most people and there's not much not really much chance that any of the current ai chatbots are going to do that right they're probably going to not represent the young earth answers young earth perspective um, so this is a long-winded way of saying that uh what I think that Answers in Genesis will do. Now, whether they've thought of this or not, I don't think that I'm going to uh, be like giving them some kind of inspiration. I think that they've already thought of this. But if they haven't, uh, they're going to think of it anyway. So it's not like me, I'm giving them some kind of gold nugget. I, I mean, it is if they haven't thought of it. Um, this is a golden idea. Uh, they have the resources, unlike the other organizations, uh, Answers in Genesis has has enough collective resource, all right, but I mean like videos and written stuff, right, to train basically um, an AI chatbot on its own data, right? And you can do that these days. You can take ChatGPT4, and if you have a paid account, you can upload a whole bunch of information. Actually, it's for me, it's kind of limited, but for others, you know, if you buy a more enterprise account, you can upload huge amounts of material from your own organization and then have it read all that material so it stores in its memory. And then you can simply search that knowledge base and say, get your answers from this knowledge base, as opposed to get it from just all the rest of what you've machine learned from the rest of the world, the right database. All right, so then if somebody comes and searches through this particular chatbot, like it's a sub chatbot of the major chatbot, right? Uh, chat GPT for four answers in Genesis, and you could put they could put it on their website, and they could put it on their other multimedia um, pages, and those who come to answers in Genesis, right, looking for answers from Genesis, then will actually get answers from Genesis rather than answers from the rest of the world. Right, so they create their own internal search engine. Uh, and this is just the next step in terms of creating a silo, right? Creating a, a Christian wall, you know, bridge against the rest of society. 
you've got your homeschool material, you've got your uh, you've got your books, you have your approved reading lists, right? You have your Bible uh, curriculum, um, and so and you have your news, you have your uh, videos that now are covering all kinds of social issues. In other words, almost any question, actually the dream of Ken Ham, I'm sure, is that any question you'd have as a Christian could could be answered from Answers in Genesis, right? Within this particular perspective of a young earth, right? And their particular hermeneutic or way of reading and understanding the scriptures. Uh, and that would then apply to all cultural issues and all questions of our day. And if you can get people to be within that wall, you know, believe like I need to exclude this outside world, then they provide a search engine, right? They provide their own worldwide web or access to information that is derived from their own knowledge base. And therefore it's biased toward answers in Genesis. Right, they're saying, you know, the current chat bot, you know, chat GPT 4.0 uh, and Claude 3 and Perplexity and there's, you know, uh, Meta has one and um, La oh, what was that, Llama 3 and I've only just kind of barely played with that one. Um, yes, all of those do not have a bias towards a young earth. <laughs> they have a bias toward old earth perspective. Uh, on any questions involving in geology and evolution and uh, in biology and astronomy and so forth. Um, and so they're going to, they're going to, I'm saying they're going to get, yeah, because I really believe they're going to do this, right? Once they figure this out, uh, this is the next step in their own evolution as a multimedia enterprise. Um, and this capturing AI to turn it toward uh, shaping and influencing the people within their sphere and basically maintaining that sphere, uh, they're going to use that as a, as a way of continuing to manipulate people. And this is, this is really not a concern just of me. I mean, I've, I've watched enough videos to know this isn't just about Christians versus or young earth versus old earth. This is, um, you know, Republicans and Democrats or, uh, different uh, sects or different races or different, however you want to categorize uh, different people groups with different persuasions who are trying to influence others in this world, right? Are all trying to manipulate the message. I think it's only natural that Answers in Genesis, based on its past history, will take this next step or next foray. So now let me show you Right, I've been babbling along for a while. I don't think I need to say a whole lot more about this. So let me be a little more, uh, let me show you something. Uh, I have created my own GPT. Um, so my own custom GPT through chat GPT, uh, the open AI um, large language module. module. Uh, and I have created my own GPT to do my own searches of answers in Genesis website for my own data uh, and, well, my own research, right? So I've created a whole bunch of my own personal GPTs, each of which have a particular purpose um, that allow me to more effectively research different types of topics. So I'll show you my GPT from Answers in Genesis, which is not publicly available, um, might make it uh, be publicly available at some point, uh, but I'm still working on it but I'll show you my version as it is right now. So let's do that. Yeah, so here, here I'm on uh, ChatGPT's website. I'm in my own account. And I'm showing you a few of my uh, specific custom GPTs that I've created with my uh, subscription account. Um, and the, all of these actually just recently, um, ChatGPT opened up GPTs, custom GPTs and the GPT store for even free users. It used to only be for subscribers. Uh, and those GPTs are great. I mean, they're really ways to sort of like hone in on a particular topic uh, and to help make you, it, really what they're doing is they're just creating more extensive and better made prompts so you get more specific answers back. Uh, using ChatGPT or even Claude 3 and to some extent perplexity um, requires really knowing how to sculpt your commands uh, to get the most effective uh, messages back. All right, so a lot of people experience a lot of sort of wonky results. And a lot of times that's because 
you're not giving it enough information for it to be able to really uh, interpret what you're looking for and to be able to find the specific things that you you're requesting. Um, and so that's the kind of the purpose of these custom GPTs. And you see this top one right here is answers from answers in Genesis. Maybe you can't quite see that. Um, and that's the one that we're going to take a look at in just a minute. But I've written interactive science process tutor. I have scientific method tutor uh, that teaches the scientific method through a stepwise fashion. Um, I have a, uh, a tutor for my particular class that I'm teaching starting next week. Uh, I have my own uh, chat GPT called Divining Duff, which is for myself. And I have uploaded all of my blog posts, right? All 450 of them. So all of that into the memory, it's actually in private memory. So it's not out into the public. I'm not, I'm not adding it to the public database. Uh, and then I can find out anything that I've said and where I've said it, right? <laughs> because it's hard to keep track of 450 posts. Uh, and I can search my blog site for something, but if I, if I search for a keyword, then I get like 15 different blogs, all right, blog posts where I might have mentioned something about that particular topic. And so it comes up, but then I'll have to click on those links and then I have to go into that particular blog post and then I have to find where I talked about it. But here, what I can do is I can, I can harness the power of ChatGPT by simply giving it all my blog posts and then asking it like, where did I talk about X? Right. Where have I talked about, you know, Adam and Eve or where have I talked about dinosaurs? Where have I talked about footprints in the fossil record? Something that I've talked a lot about on this uh, particular channel. Right. So I say that and what I get back, I just ask that question. And what I get back is because I've trained this thing to it actually has a prompt in there that you don't see but it will come back with a list of, well, actually it comes back with a dialogue that tells me what it thinks that I have said about that topic. Like, what do I think about that particular subject? And then it gives a series of quotes, right? In which it's picking out specific quotes of things I've said on that particular topic. And then it's referencing me to what blog posts they're in. Uh, so it's great because then I can just see it all on one page, all collected for me in the space of a few seconds. So that's that to me is one of the really powerful things that is a really huge time saver for me when you have a large database and you're simply trying to find information in it. Uh, but what we're here for to demo is this one right here, Answers from Answers in Genesis. All right. So. Uh, what does Answers in Genesis have to say about any subject? Just ask me here, I say. All right, so what I'm going to do is, and what I'm, what, before I do this, what I'm trying to do is show you that what Answers in Genesis can do is they could simply upload like their entire database of documents and eventually uh, ChatGPT and other large language models become multimodal meaning that they can cross uh, types of files, you know, audio files and video files, right? And images, right? Eventually it's gonna be able to read all of those different types of data sources, right? Uh, and so it'll be able to pluck out information from any of those things, including their huge database of videos. And then from that construct a answer about like, what does Answers in Genesis say or think on a particular topic? What does Ken Ham say about a topic? What does Bodhi Hoge have to say about X, Y, or Z? Uh, what I've done here is a little simpler, all right? For my own uh, purposes of finding out what is on the Answers in Genesis website without actually having to search the Answers in Genesis website and go through a series of clicking links, right? I have asked answers that I have created a prompt here, which you don't see, right? It's embedded within the GPT that I made. So I have an extremely long prompt uh, that I've written has all the instructions here. Uh, basically the code, except it's written in, in word format. Like I've, you know, here's what I want you to do. I explain what I want it to do. Um, and I'm, I'm telling it, go to the answers in Genesis site, right? And you're going to extract, all right, and look at what has been said about on this topic and then report back to me about that. So let's, uh, let's try this prompt, right? I just copied this out because I, I want to make sure that it's going to show you something that I, I already have seen before. Although 
I'm going to enter this prompt now, I'm not going to get exactly the same result I've gotten in the previous time I've prompted this, because every time you ask this thing to provide an answer, it's going to write it in a different way. So I'm not going to get a, a, the same thing. So I'll be interested to see if it's similar. So I'm asking, this is the question I'm going to ask. What does Ken Ham have to say about climate change? Include direct quotes from Answers in Genesis articles. It's important to say direct quotes uh, and provide references for those quotes. All right. I could just say, what does Ken have to say about climate change? I'll get something from that. But I'm asking for a little bit more here. And of course, I could always follow up by asking those additional questions. All right. Summary of Ken Ham's perspective on climate change. Ken Ham, founder of Answers in Genesis, approaches the topic of climate change um, from a young earth creationist perspective, which interprets the Bible as the ultimate authority on matters, including scientific ones. AIG asserts that mainstream science interpretations on climate change are flawed due to the reliance on naturalistic assumptions that exclude divine intervention. That is a nice summary of how Ken Ham would probably uh, introduce that topic of how he feels about climate change right so what are what are those what are those key points this is fairly similar to the previous prompt i did but it has a bit a little bit different structure to it than it had before so let's see what we got here biblical authority right ken ham emphasizes the authority of the bible understanding the natural world including climate right we're building an argument for why he believes what he believes about climate change well you got to start with biblical authority <laughs> of course that is always where ken ham starts so Kudos to ChatGPT. By the way, this is uh, the model we're using here is ChatGPT 4.0, which as of the time of me making this video uh, is only about two weeks old. Uh, been, been out there for about two weeks and it is far better, right? Far, far better for most of the things that I've been interested in doing. Uh, far better than the previous models, especially 3.5. So if you've been using the free version with 3.5, uh, you're totally missing out uh, on the on the, the the real capacity of ChatGPT, uh, but 4.0 is also free to everybody. Now uh, there are some limitations on it, but you can you can access 4.0 or 4.0, not 4.0. Yeah, confusing uh, terminology for these things. Uh, you know, I'm not here to read this whole thing. What we're what I'm I'm just showing you here is the type of research that I can do very simply with a tool like this that I've written for myself. You can do this with ChatGPT. You just have to write out more of an explanation, write more of a script to get this kind of information back. And I've also written in a way I want a certain format and I want a certain type of writing uh, when it's written to me. And I've also excluded certain words. You can tell ChatGPT to never use particular words like delve, right? <laughs> um, Tapestry is another word that ChatGPT likes to write with. Uh, and so I have a whole list of words that are excluded words I ask it not to use in its writing. And I also have a, a I've also told it what writing style to use. There's, there's a whole set of uh, writing prompts basically to get the style of writing that's going to be in these responses versus if you just go and ask a question like a simple one liner, you're going to get the very generic, you know, sort of bland, you know, average sounding, um, boring uh, conversation. Um, not that I've spiced this up a lot, but I've certainly changed it over what it typically does as an output. Uh, then then we, what we have here is we have a quote that backs up the biblical authority thing. The most important starting point to understanding the world, including climate, is God's word. The Bible provides true history of the world, which we need to correctly interpret the evidence, the evidence we observe today. Uh, link to answers in Genesis, which hopefully would link to that particular website. Although I will tell you, sometimes the links are broken. Um, and sometimes I have to regenerate and say, yeah, give me the links. And, and maybe I, sometimes I have to tell it, give me a hyperlink. And if I say hyperlink, then it gives me the actual link. Uh, I need to work that into the prompt still. That's why I said it's still, still under revision. That's why I'm not releasing this to the world at this point. Um, Okay, so we've got skepticism of climate uh, catastrophe, catastrophic climate predictions. Are skeptical of catastrophic climate change predictions made by many scientists and environmentalists. They argue that many of these predictions and so forth. Uh, right? Oh, and according to answers in Genesis, oh yes, the Earth's climate naturally varies over time and so forth. So, right, they're saying like 
hey, look, there's just nat this is just natural variation. And are we responsible? Well, no, no, we're, we're not responsible. We are responsible for stewarding this world. Uh, and then this is actually part of my prompt. I say that, you know, give me some ideas for other things I might want to ask. And so this is ChatGPT actually looking at the at these pages, right? What's been written. And so it's like, hey, you might also be interested if you're interested in that question, you might want to fine tune that question and ask these specific questions, right? You know, what is the biblical basis for understanding climate change? Maybe you want to dig into that a little further. What does answers in Genesis really say? Uh, and then if I say one, all I do is put one down here and it will just do that prompt, right? And it will give me another response just specific to that, including references. Uh, and then here are the, the references for that whole thing, you know? And then I told it to ask this question at the end, would you like a more extensive outline or additional references? I can say, yes, give me, give me more of that. It's a, like a reminder to myself, here's other things I might want to know as I'm doing this research. Would you like to compare this information with outside sources? Ah, would you like to compare what Ken Ham says about climate change with what the rest of the internet says, right? With other sources, I'll do a compare. I'll do a comp uh, you know a, a side by side comparison for you. Um, and so, and do you want to compare it to a specific source? I want to know what Ken Ham says compared to the New York Times, right? Or I want to know what Ken Ham says compared to Joel Duff on his blog, Naturalis Historia, and give, give it the website address so that it will specifically look at that and it limit, its, limit its responses and answers to things that I have written on that particular site. All right, so I, think, I hope you can see some of the power of this. Uh, it's certainly helpful for me when I am constantly like thinking of topics and I have a, a large, I have a large amount of memory of like, I remember I remember the basic positions of things because I've, I've read a ton of young earth gracious material, but I often can't remember who said what, where, and when. Uh, I don't have a good memory for names and times and article names and so forth. Uh, so that all gets lost in my mind. Uh, so it takes me a long time sometimes to do a lot of searching when I'm making these videos in order to find the sources. Uh, this is why it was worth my time to write this GPT, which honestly didn't really take that much time. All right, in order for me to now have a much easier tool to be able to go in and scour Answers in Genesis website. Now, of course, you know what this means is I'm not actually going to the Answers in Genesis website, right? So they're receiving fewer clicks um, to their site, not that they care about me visiting their site, um, but it does show how, you know, they're not, nobody else is getting any advertising dollars from this operation right so there's a whole nother topic here that's like the big one of the biggest topics for our day and, and the changing world we're living in and and that is how is this all going to be sustained who's paying for this type of stuff how will advertising work in the future what are the models and the business models uh, around this but you know what answers in genesis could make a gpt like this right they could take something like this and uh, they simply have to uh, pay, they could pay a bunch of money uh, in order to host a, uh, a chat bot on their particular site that's trained on their particular material. And then when these responses come up, they can encode into that, right? It's an open model, right? They could encode into that the links to all their particular pages. They could encode into it suggestions for buying books. They could do, you know, you, they build their own advertising, their own uh, you know, marketing around this. And that's what you're seeing other websites do, right? Whether you realize it or not, there's a bunch of other businesses out there that are already, you're already using something like an AI agent in order to find information on their particular website. Uh, and it's, it's, and it is directing you to their particular, um, answers that they want you to have. All right. I think that's, uh, it gives you a flavor for it. I, like I said, I was just, um, you know, on this podcast, uh, the Reco Recovering of Evangelicals, and I, I just mentioned AI, and I was sort of speculating about this being the next step because I was being asked about the future of Answers in Genesis and creationism overall. And I was saying that Answers in Genesis has grown to the point where they really, um, uh, they have enough resources to kind of do whatever they want uh, and they have big ideas, right? They have, especially now they have a new CEO, 
And you might say, well, you know, Ken Ham leaving, but actually I think this new CEO, Martin Isles, probably has a bigger vision than Ken Ham had. I think he thinks bigger, and I think he's ready to uh, to expand Answers in Genesis at a, a, an incredible rate, uh, if possible. Right, really pushing for donor dollars and so forth. I think they have, oh, they definitely have other big pocket money um, that is now behind them because it's all about lobbying. And it's like seeing the influence they have on politicians, and you know they're they're starting to bring in big money. Big money means they now can afford to do these types of things, which just make them even bigger. Uh, and so that growth could accelerate, just like a company's growth accelerates. Uh, these large companies that take off, right? So NVIDIA right now going absolutely nuts. And Microsoft and Google, and of course, they're not anywhere near on that size, of course. But in terms of societal influence, um, Answers in Genesis has a pretty decent footprint and they have an awful large audience uh, and their audience buys stuff, right? And so that's, uh, it's something that they can leverage. Um, in a much bigger way, I think, with, with artificial intelligence that they have now. Uh, now, they're going to have to get over this interesting stumbling block, which is a skepticism of AI and a fear of like what AI could do to the world and you know this whole question of intelligence. And you know, there's, there's, there is a little bit of a hesitancy um, because that much of many people in their audience are very hesitant about uh, artificial intelligence. And to be honest, I, like I got big questions about it myself. You know, I have big concerns about whether we can handle this kind of technology as the human race moving forward. I mean, I just, you know, I don't have a lot, a whole lot of faith right now in our politicians and, uh, decision makers to make wise decisions. And since this is going to up, well, sorry, I'm going off on a, on a tangent here, but uh, since I believe that this will be a disruptive technology that's going to disrupt virtually all different kinds of things that we do and change them into different ways that we do them, uh, that's going to be disruptive to society if you don't have some really smart people in charge um, who can smooth that transition, right? Put into place, um, you know, training and uh, helping people to uh, change into different jobs and all that. And honestly, I don't really see that happening in the United States in a very efficient manner. And if it's not efficient, then it's going to be very disruptive. Uh, and, but I, th I think that Answers in Genesis will, it, they're not dummies in terms of the marketing aspect. And I think that they'll find ways to take advantages of this. And I think they're in a unique place to probably take advantage of artificial intelligence. And, and they, you know, providing uh, what is perceived by their audience as a, you know, a value that they don't get from anyone else. So there it is. Answers from Answers in Genesis, my little, um, my little creation that I've been playing with. And uh, I'm still, like I said, I'm still testing it. Uh, and, oh, I, I will add uh, one other thing, right? I've asked it many, many questions and to which I know the answers because I know the Answers in Genesis website really well. And so that's one thing about using artificial intelligence. It helps to, if I'm doing research on something that I already know about, then I feel more confident in the results that I'm getting because um, I know where they're wrong. I know when I'm getting, you know, basically right information uh, out of it. And for the most part, so far, I'm getting what I think is to be quite accurate information in the responses to my questions. There's one exception. I, I asked about what Answers in Genesis position was on uh, whether gorillas and chimpanzees were the same kind of organism. And Answers in Genesis actually has uh, thought of, of all the apes as being the same kind, meaning they all come from a common ancestor, except for humans, of course, which are separately created. Um, and so I know that that's what their position has been, but it's not really clearly stated very well. It's like it's on an image at Answers in Genesis, uh, the Creation Museum, and at the Ark Encounter. Uh, but it's not really super clearly stated in the literature because I, I know, because I've searched. Um, it's inferred, 
And so I wasn't surprised when ChatGPT responded that, it, you, but it, basically what it did was it it covered like what if Genesis and what does Answers in Genesis believe a kind is, right? And it described like their criteria for kind. That they got accurately. Uh, and as a result of what it thought a kind was, it then inferred that their position about gorillas and chimpanzees must be that they're different kinds because they don't interbreed. And I'm thinking, that's really good logic. In other words, it used excellent logic to infer the answer because it really couldn't find a direct answer to that question. And it, in fact, I'm pretty sure it found places that made it sound like they are different kinds. And it also inferred from general knowledge of here's how Answers in Genesis defines these terms and then applied those definitions to what it already knows about chimpanzees and gorillas from the rest of the internet. Uh, and decided, oh, Answers in Genesis must believe they're different kinds and told me that's what they believe. That would be wrong, but I understand why it's wrong because Answers in Genesis isn't clear on this topic. And that that led me to this really cool, I think kind of, you know, I think th it just hit me. Something that I've said many times is that Answers in Genesis is very inconsistent in their answers, right? One answer is not consistent with another. When they try to answer one question, they contradict something else. So it's self-contradictory stuff all over their website, especially when you consider it's been around for a long time and some of the older material contradicts some of the newer thoughts. So they have changed their mind on some things. And then, but when ChatGPT or these artificial agents, they look at, and they're looking at holistically like, okay, here's all the info. And now I'm gonna extract the answer for you, right? What is their position? Well, is it their position in the past? Is it their position right now? Um, is it their average position? All right, see, that's where it gets a little tricky, right? That's that's where it gets a little tricky. And that's why it's important to be able to pull out quotes, right? Because I'm not just relying on their summary. I am interested in the summary that's provided for me, right, by ChatGPT. But I'm more interested in the quotes and where they came from because I will then use those more likely in any future presentation that I make, right? I also want to say that I'm, still pretty careful about uh, checking on the references, All right? So I'm not just like, shh, I just scoop up stuff for the chat GPT writes and hey, that's what I'm going with. Uh, I still rely on uh, actually going and looking at things. But I do wonder if, if a day is coming in which I gain enough trust in my prompt and in the information that's provided me that it's like statistically not worth me going to check up on it because most, you know, if 99 out of 100 times it's going to be right, um, then the error rate is no greater than the error rate of me going looking for things and, and not finding the right thing, right? Or missing some piece of information, where it's, whereas it may not have missed it in most cases. So in other words, its research is going to be better than mine at some point. And so it's just worth going with it. I'm not there yet, but this is the direction things are going in terms of research. And so I'm finding this useful. I'm making my own custom GPTs for other scientific topics, all right, that are looking at literature and able to then tell me, you know, what do we know about this and pull out quotes. Um, and that helps me keep up on other areas as well. All right, I, I just thought you might be interested in this idea of like how artificial intelligence could actually be something that uh, creationists will uh, harness in the future. And I don't think you should be surprised uh, if they do. Uh, and it's just another way that Answers in Genesis is going to stay ahead and continue to be ahead of the other uh, creation ministries, which um, may not have the resources to do this. Although, as you see, this didn't cost me anything to make this. and I made it in a couple hours. Uh, but it's not nearly as powerful as what they could eventually do to it. All right. If you want to use it for marketing and include images and links to product pages and all that, then you really need to, you're going to pay a service to do that. That's where it's going to get pricey. But as an individual, I can harness this power to uh, do a lot of things that uh, in a much shorter period of time than it would have taken me in the past. Uh, and certainly ICR and Creation Ministries International, they can do use these tools as well. Um, but I'm just not sure they can implement them on a on a large scale 
uh, that would have the type of influence that Answers in Genesis could have uh, with the general public uh, who might stumble upon you know, their interface, uh, but certainly within those that are in with, within their circle and they want to maintain and keep in their circle. It's just another way of, I mean, uh, you know, to be uh, blunt about it, it's another way of mind control, right? right. And a very effective uh, form of mind control uh, at that. All right, let's leave it there. Hey, hit the like, subscribe button if, if you liked it and you want to subscribe. Uh, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank <laughs> you.